The long-term harmful effects of lead exposure to children under the age of 12 are well documented. Unfortunately, some children's jewelry contains lead. This presentation explains a fast, straightforward, and non-destructive method to test children's jewelry for dangerous levels of lead. Lead has historically been used in jewelry for a variety of purposes. The potential risk of purchasing new jewelry with high lead content is greatest with jewelry that contains minimal, if any, precious metals. Now, lead in jewelry does not enter the body by simply wearing it. The way lead can enter the body is if it's put in the mouth, which is not an unusual thing for a child to do. If the lead mixes with saliva or stomach acids, it can leach out into the body. The use of lead in consumer products was first banned in the European Union beginning in July of 2006 with the Restriction of Hazardous Substances Directive. EU's REACH program set a limit of no more than 0.05% lead by weight in consumer products, which includes children's jewelry. The United States issued limits on lead in children's jewelry through the Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act with the American Society of Testing Materials. ASTM specifications set a limit of no more than 0.01% lead by weight in jewelry for children under the age of 12. Other regions have their own regulations. Lead limit regulations in jewelry are enforced by local consumer protection authorities. The EU requires a declaration of conformity statement for manufacturers or importers with an accompanying test report on lead content. Failure to submit a DOC can result in monetary charges and the banning of product sales. The U.S. requires a children's product certificate for manufacturers or importers with an accompanying test report on lead content. Failure to submit a CPC can result in product seizures by U.S. Customs, product recalls from the CPSC, shipment refusal by freight forwarders, and refusal to list products by mail order companies. There are many ways to test jewelry for lead. Portable XRF is popular because it is fast, accurate, straightforward to use, and very importantly, it is non-destructive. It will not damage the piece of jewelry in any way. It doesn't require scrapings to be taken, spots to be burned, or acids to be dissolved on it. One thing that makes it easier to understand results is the ability to set up pass-fail criteria for the lead measurements. Limits set by IEC for electronics or by REACH and ASTM for jewelry or any other set of limits can be used. Another important benefit of using PXRF is its mobility. The analyzer can be taken to the samples for testing. The jewelry doesn't need to be sent to a lab for testing and results can be printed out or saved right then and there. Bruker has a portable benchtop XRF, which is a self-contained safety interlocked unit with touchscreen operation accessible in the front. Bruker also has a handheld XRF, which can be set up in a test stand for small samples or used by simply holding it and touching it directly to a larger sample. Bruker's portable benchtop and handheld XRF analyzers can be pre-programmed with a ready-to-go restricted materials calibration, which includes lead measurements. Pre-installed or user-created pass-fail limits can be selected from a pull-down menu. An internal camera can be used to position the sample directly in the beam of the energy source. And an indication of pass or fail along with the concentration of the elements can be seen on the user screen in less than 30 seconds. PXRF testing is a fast and simple operation. Ensure you have the right calibration, in this case restricted materials. Place the side of the sample you want to analyze on the window and select the camera to ensure sample placement. You can capture images of the sample being tested with a simple touch. Select OK to let the analyzer know the settings are correct. Then close the lid and press the start trigger. The flashing red lights indicate that X-ray energy is being generated. You can immediately see the spectra of the sample at the bottom of the user screen indicating that it's collecting data. And in less than 30 seconds, it is obvious this piece of jewelry failed the lead test 
In fact, it contains 44.5% lead. It's that simple to find out if a piece of jewelry has dangerous levels of lead. So what is X-ray fluorescence spectrometry? It's a technology that depends on an X-ray source to excite elements in a sample and a detector to identify them. When an X-ray source's energy hits a sample, it can eject electrons from an element's inner atomic orbital. When that happens, electrons from the outer shell move into the inner shell voids to regain stability. During those transitions, the outer electrons generate energy characteristic of the element. These characteristic energies are the fluorescent X-rays of the element that was excited. For example, lead has a characteristic energy at 10.551 keV. How does the detector identify the elements? Well, it provides an elemental spectrum of the sample as peaks, which consist of the signature energies in keV along the x-axis and their intensities as pulses along the y-axis. For instance, in this spectrum of a piece of jewelry, it identifies lead at 10.551 keV, nickel at 7.480 keV, silver at 22.163 keV, and so on. The way it determines the concentration of the elements is by using information from their peak intensities. The way it uses peak intensities to determine concentrations can be seen from these spectra of various concentrations of lead. When there is no lead, there is no peak at the 10.551 keV, but as the amount of lead increases, the peak heights or intensities increase. A calibration is then created by plotting the concentrations of the lead in the reference samples along the x-axis with their intensities along the y-axis. So if you have a sample with an unknown concentration of lead, you can test it to determine the intensity of its lead peak. You can then use the calibration to determine the sample's lead concentration. For example, if the intensity is 1500 on the y-axis of this calibration, you can determine that its concentration of lead is about 575 parts per million. In summary, if you want to test for lead in children's jewelry, a portable XRF analyzer with a restricted materials calibration installed will provide you with accurate and precise answers in as little as one minute or less. All of the materials along with the analyzer can be secured in a backpack for convenient transport to analysis at assembly lines, shipping and receiving locations, service labs, jewelry and other specialty shops, or anywhere testing is needed. Thank you for taking the time to view our video. If you would like more information about Bruker's portable XRF solutions for testing consumer products for lead, please contact us at www.bruker.com.